So today's video is pretty straightforward. It's just going to be me giving my top five teaching tips. Obviously, as always, remember every situation is different. Oh my god, I'm sure you're sick of hearing that by now. But it's true. My first tip, tip number one, is be flexible. So you kind of need to judge each class as you get to know them and be able to adjust your lesson a little bit for each one. For example, I find that my rowdier classes, which are very talky and harder to get to concentrate, I never put them in groups anymore or do any group activities unless it's absolutely essential. Because once you put them in groups, it is impossible to recapture their attention. So for those classes, I let them work in pairs and it works much better, it's much more focused and concentrated. Where some classes I have are silent, completely quiet. I get no volunteers, but they also don't talk to each other and mess around, they just sit and stare at me. So for those classes, I do put them in groups and I think that makes them more comfortable because it's a more casual setting and then they actually do start to talk and interact with each other and, you know, do the activities I ask them to do. The types of activities I do and the format of the lesson as a whole can change, so be flexible. Now let's move on to tip number two and that is Provide motivation for the majority of my classes. I get no volunteers when I ask questions. Sometimes I have one or two kids and that's nice, but generally I need to provide them with motivation. This year I had a stamp system and I gave them all a, a sheet where I would stamp every time they volunteered an answer. It doesn't matter if they got the answer completely wrong, whatever. If you volunteer for anything whatsoever, you get a stamp. And I said to the kids in my first lesson, at the end of term, whoever has the most stamps will get a prize. It worked better in some classes than others. In a lot of classes, there were one or two kids which really wanted this prize, so they volunteered for everything but then no one else tried. But in the final class, what I ended up doing was, although I gave a big box of chocolates to the winner, I also had tiny little chocolates which I gave out to people who had one or more stamps. Because I want them to understand that, you know, you will be rewarded for trying, for putting in effort. But you have to just decide what will work for your school. Uh, I know for sure if I try doing a sticker system at my night school that the kids there would just laugh at me. But I do recommend that you find something to motivate your students. And speaking of motivation, one of the best motivators is competition. So this is similar to my last tip, but for different purposes. Competition is a much better motivator for having kids enjoy the different activities you prepare and really put in effort into the actual work that you give them. So I disguise a lot of my activities as games just by offering points for whichever pair or whichever group answers this question or whatever and I keep score on the board. But there's no prize, there's no, no real significance to winning. In my final class of term, I did a whole big review of everything we've done so far and I disguised it as my Mario Kart game which I talk about in my self-introduction lesson if you're curious about that. But basically I give them all in groups, I give them different worksheets and every time they complete a worksheet if it's all correct I move them forward on the board. And this takes most of the lesson and essentially all I'm doing is putting them in groups and saying here's five boring ass worksheets that you're going to fill out today but it's Mario Kart and it's a game and you can win. So they get so excited and there's kids which literally can't sit down, they're so into it. Something I also did this semester was on Amazon, I bought these buzzers. So when they're in groups, sometimes I'll give them out these buzzers and I'll be like, okay, first team to finish this activity or whatever, push the buzzer and if you're correct, I'll give you a point. And it's like, they laugh so hard at the noises and they get really into it because they just, they want to push the button. Just such simple things can, do so much to get them to put effort into class. Okay, so that was competition. And depending on the competition you've prepared and how much explanation it requires, you will need to give the kids some time to absorb. Tip number four. This is something I actually really need to implement more myself. A teacher gave me this tip earlier this term. Definitely gonna take it on board. There's been so many situations when I'll explain an activity and I'm like, okay, put your hand up if you don't understand. No one puts their hand up. And I'm like, okay, start. And then they just stare blankly. So I think what I need to do now, and which I recommend you do as well, is make sure they have time to just digest instructions and everything you tell them. So for example, some things I'm going to start trying are to get volunteers to explain what I said in Japanese to the rest of the class. And also I might try after I give a big set of instructions. I'll just give them 30 seconds, talk to your partner, and explain what it is that you're about to do. Just something to let them process what you say. So yeah, time to absorb. 
And my last tip is extra time. Always, always be prepared with something to do if you have extra time in your lesson. When I'm lesson planning, I generally put estimated timings for each activity and have it cover the whole lesson. And then I add another activity on top of that every time. And a lot of the time I don't get to do the extra time activity and that's fine because there are some times when I have so much extra time, especially with my choir classes because I don't have to spend time kind of being like, okay guys, pay attention and re-explaining. Extra time activities could be something as simple as a game of hangman on the board or a word search or anything at all, but just have something in the back of your mind ready. And yeah, let me know your tips in the comments below or if you found these ones useful or just any thoughts at all. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you wanna see more and I will see you next week. Okay, bye.